What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and I'm here to let you know that Spencer Confidential is no perfect movie. And it follows an ex-cop named Spencer played by Mark Wahlberg who just got out of jail for assaulting a crooked cop. And on the very day that he gets out of prison, this crooked cop and a friend of Spencer's are both brutally murdered and he suspects foul play. So he teams up with his roommate, Hawk, played by Winston Duke, to solve this case and bring some justice to innocent people. I wasn't even going to watch this movie until my family was just scrolling along on Netflix and we came across the trailer and we thought, you know what, that didn't suck as much as we thought, as much as we thought it would. So we all sat down, we had dinner, we watched it, and we had a decent enough time. The movie's harmless, but I felt like... As I was watching this movie, it wasn't really clear what they were trying to accomplish. Right down to the genre. When you look at the marketing for this movie, you expect it to be a lighthearted, cliched buddy cop comedy. And in some aspects it is, but this movie takes itself so seriously sometimes that I can't even tell if, as they were making this movie, if they were trying to make a comedy or a drama. Because there is one scene where Wahlberg tells a story about a woman who not only finds her cat brutally strung up on her porch and we see it in like almost a long take where she walks from point a to point b and she discovers it and then another scene like that where mark Wahlberg walks from point a as a cop to point b a trunk where he finds her incredibly bloody corpse inside of her own car and it's taken these flashbacks are taken a hundred percent seriously as you would expect but then it cuts to winston duke listening to the flashback and goes Son of a bitch killed a cat? And I just sat there and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That is the level of comedy that we're going for here. And not all the jokes are like that. Because as I'm saying that, it does lead to a really good moment where Duke ends up keying the killer's car with a cat. And that part was funny, but the setup and the transition from comedy to drama really doesn't work all that much sometimes in this movie. And when it doesn't, it... It's just cringeworthy half the time. And honestly, the story's even just as messy. You got Spencer at the center of it trying to take down some corrupt police officers as the central conflict. And we've got that flashback sequence that ties in a separate case into the present. We've got Spencer trying to be trying to get along with this new roommate. And at first, it's obviously contentious and they have to find a way to work with each other and learn about each other. We get two exposition scenes that are like five minutes long where they each talk about themselves in great detail and then for whatever reason they still leave stuff up to interpretation even though you just laid out half their story anyways. There's a ton of stuff involving Spencer's batshit crazy ex-girlfriend whose only personality is that she loves dogs and she's from Boston because her accent is unbelievably ridiculous. Half her choices make absolutely zero sense. They try to do that I love you, I hate you thing. I couldn't follow it. I, one second she hates him, the next second they're fucking each other in a bathroom. <sighs> Hell, I, I was looking forward to seeing Alan Arkin in this movie because I think he's funny. Half the time I forgot he was even in the movie because he disappears so often and half his jokes aren't even all that funny that... It kind of made sense why I kept forgetting about him. And I keep saying half the time because, honestly, the other half of this movie is perfectly fine. I mean, nobody gives a bad performance in this movie. Mark Wahlberg and Winston Duke do have solid enough chemistry with one another. They each try to balance the humor and the drama as much as they possibly can. Duke especially because he plays this very blunt and no-nonsense individual who's clearly hiding a lot of pain about himself and how his troubled past may have some connection emotionally anyways to the victims in this case because he has this really tender moment with one of the victim's sons that was easily the best scene in this movie it was very quiet it was mostly subtle it was i don't really know what else to say it was just such a sweet tender moment that I was kind of hoping there'd be more scenes like that in the movie and it was clear that they were trying to add more scenes like that because the first central conflict between Spencer and Duke is them fighting over Spencer's pet dog 
Duke is just cuddling with this dog, and Wahlberg's just sitting there going. And normally that would be funny, but the pause just lasted for way too long. And the action, which I was lo really looking forward to, because in the trailer, it looked like there were a lot of steady shots where you could actually see the punches. You could actually see people doing stunts. And most of it is decent. This was directed by Peter Berg, who's a big fan of handheld camera work. He uh, worked with Mark Wahlberg on the True Life Boston Trilogy, as well as Mile 22. The Boston Trilogy got better with each movie. Mile 22, I honestly don't know what happened. But honestly, there are a lot of fist fights where you can actually see the punches and the hits, and you can clearly see that it's the actors doing it, and it looks decent. The only real problem with those fist fights is that they don't really last for too long. But when you come down to like bigger stunts where people are jumping through things, they have weapons, they're crashing cars, they cut on every single hit, and you don't see or feel the hit because they cut every single couple seconds, and it really ruins those moments. There was a restaurant fight that I was looking forward to, and half the time I couldn't even see what was going on. People were supposed to get like slashed with machetes all over the place, and I'm just like, I can't see shit, what are you doing? There was a car crash featuring explosions. I'm like, yeah, just because we can see the explosions for like half a second doesn't mean we're just like, oh, holy shit, that was awesome. No, we need to see everything on impact. There's, there should not be, it, it, there's no way in hell it can be more expensive to film in one shot. Come on. I know I keep saying that half the time this movie isn't really all that good and half the time it's perfectly fine. I know I'm freaking out about that, but the truth is this could have been like a really good guilty pleasure, but instead it was just harmless. It reminded me of watching like episodes of The Ranch. It's decent in parts, but they can't really decide on whether they're trying to be lighthearted with some drama or dark drama with a couple funny moments. That was the experience that I had watching Spencer Confidential. And if you're looking for a guilty pleasure, something that's completely harmless to watch on Netflix, you won't hate yourself for watching this movie. I mean, the actors are all as fine as they can possibly be. And the direction is half and half. Half of it was fine. It just, it could have been a lot better than it was. And a part of me wondered if this guy, like, heavily rewritten during production. So... For those reasons, I'm going to give Spencer Confidential a 2.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. If you've seen Spencer Confidential, if you disagree with me, be sure to let me know in the comments below. What's a Netflix movie that has gotten on your radar recently? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.